Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth installment of Mastering Science and Technology. Let's learn. In this one, we will be learning about INS Arihant. INS Arihant, as we know, it is the first indigenously built nuclear capable, nuclear powered submarine of India. Uh, so, it is the first India's nuclear ballistic missile and it, it is also the nuclear first nuclear powered missile, I mean submarine and it is also the first India's nuclear ballistic submarine means it can launch ballistic missiles so that is why it is very much important and this makes India a successful nuclear triad what is nuclear triad means we can launch nuclear attacks nuclear missiles from both uh, from all the three land sea water uh, air and among the sea we can launch it from the surface that is from ships as well as from the you know underwater that is using submarine so we can launch nuclear missile from land air and water surface as well as nuclear Arihan was launched actually in 2009. It was launched on 26 July. That was uh, on the anniversary of Vijay Divas, the victory day of Kargil War. And this was this actually uh, this got permission. I mean, uh, after it was successfully you know uh, equipped with all those water conditions and underwater uh, deep sea conditions in 2014, and it was you know officially inducted in 2016. So that was two years ago. And why this came uh, right now in the news is because it uh, this INS Arihan has conducted all the successful deterrence patrol means it can now launch it it has already tested all these launches uh, regarding the missiles ballistic missiles as well as the non ballistic ones so you will see what are the two types of missiles that it can carry so that is why it came to news because it successfully conducted the deterrence patrol means uh, whenever there is a war like situation now India is. India have have signed this no first use policy. So India won't be going and attacking any country. Uh, let it be, you know, any enemy country. Nothing won't happen. But if an attack comes from the enemy side, then we will have the second strike. So we have a second strike policy. So anyone starts a war, then we we will definitely go and strike that enemy target. So it is for that that uh, this purpose that we are developing this nuclear triad. Now uh, Brahmos missiles also can uh, deliver nuclear warhead. Uh, we have ICBM, Agni 4, Agni 5, all those also can uh, you know uh, convey a nuclear warhead and also we are having nuclear, this nuclear submarine which can also make a nuclear uh, you know missiles possible. So all the three land, water and air are possible nuclear second strike. So every time it is second strike, no first wheel possibly we have second strike. So that is what deterrence means, means whenever there is a war like situation then we will be there to act. Uh, at the very moment so that is that test was conducted recently so that is why the, it came into the news and it is very much a proud moment uh, with you know ambitious target has been ha achieved uh, making india you know uh, what uh, the leaders are saying like india government states that this is for peace and uh, stability because once we have proper defense conditions then they won't we can prevent the attacks we, we can prevent the war so that is why this is mainly for you know the peace and stability of the country, uh, the Southeast South East Asia region, and uh, regarding the two types of missile it contains, it has uh, both ballistic missile and as well as the normal missiles. Means so ballistic missile will have a range of 3,500 kilometer, and uh, that is by the name K4 submarine missile. So K4 ballistic missiles, uh, which can carry nuclear warhead, that will be the you know that will be having the range of 3500 which will be used as uh, this uh, ballistic missile i mean to to attack different countries like you can attack china uh, you can attack pakistan also and also it also has a medium range that is 750 kilometer range uh, 12 missiles that is named k15 so k4 and k15 k15 is also known as sagarika missile so k15 sagarika missiles uh, there are 12 numbers and k4 missile that is ballistic one which is having a range of 3500 500 kilometer that that will be four numbers so 12 plus 4 total 16 missiles it can carry uh, regarding uh, the the specifications of INS Arihan 6000 ton that is a kilo, the total weight of that and it is 110 meters long and 11 meters wide so it is very large compared to our uh, diesel submarines the conventional diesel submarines now all the French Scorpion class Calvary class all are diesel powered and uh, you will see the difference between diesel powered and nuclear powered submarines it will be able to carry 12 Sagarika K-15 missiles and K-4, 4, 4 K-4 uh, ballistic missiles. Now, K-15 K Sagarika missile that is having a range of 750 km, medium range, that, one, that cannot be uh, used as a ballistic missile. And K-4, 
uh, ballistic missile that will be having a range of 3500 kilometer that can you know target different countries, capitals of other countries. Now, if, if we are deploying some uh, INS Haryan submarine uh, in that region, that Gulf of Cambay and uh, near to the Pakistan region, you can target uh, this you know any, any installations of Pakistan. So, that is why this is so important and this comes in the class of ship submersible ballistic nuclear that is SSBN. So, ship submersible ballistic nuclear submarine that is so uh, regarding INS submarine, it is the first indigenous uh, you know, nuclear submarine made by India. It is also the first nuclear submarine which can uh, you know deliver ballistic missiles in India and it is also ship submersible, the first ship submersible ballistic nuclear that is SSBN. So, all these categories statements will be correct. Arihan was launched uh, as I told the date, it was launched on 26 July 2009 uh, on the anniversary of Vijay Rivas and uh, it has uh, it is basically uh, part of India's Na Indian Navy's secretive, that is secret mission, Advanced Technology Vessel, ATV project. So, ATV project was launched, uh, you know, during the time of this 1971 liberal, this war of liberation with India and Pakistan, where Bangladesh was uh, liberated. So, at that time, US had sent, United States of America has sent some uh, nuclear submarines near that Bay of Bengal area, just to have a, you know, to, to show of their power. And at the same time, Russia also, uh, released one submarine near to that to you know deter away this uh, US submarine. So at that time, when the, the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi at that time she she thought of making uh, you know that the need for uh, nuclear submarine was there arising. So and it took like 20 years more to you know plan certain thing regarding nuclear submarine. So it was in the 1990s that they planned that uh, we will be having a project on uh, nuclear submarines. That is uh, nuclear submarines which will be having ballistic missile capability. So, in the 90, in the year 1998, if you see the next slide, uh, in the year 1998, the government of India, uh, the Vajpayee government of India conf confirmed that we will be having a project, we will start a project to build our own uh, in a nuclear capable ballistic missile submarine that is SSBN category. And so, the first one actually, it is not, uh, this is, this uh, INS Arihan is the first indigenously built nuclear submarine, but but we have uh, we have bought Russian origin nuclear powered submarine that is INS Chakra from Russia. We had bought in 2012. It was on a 10 year lease. We bought that, so it is still there with us. But this INS Chakra is not a ballistic capable. It cannot launch ballistic missiles. It is a fast submarine, like fast moving submarine. And uh, normally it will be on the you know shallow waters and continental waters. It won't be there to uh, we cannot place that or deploy that for uh, nuclear attack or uh, you know ballistic attack. So. Uh, this one, uh, it is not Indian made, it is, we, we bought it from, not bought, actually we leased it from, from Russia and that name is INS Chakra, but this INS Harrier is important by, by because it is indigenously built and uh, it is having ballistic capability, you can, uh, you know, launch ballistic missiles. Uh, regarding the uh, differences between diesel and nuclear, the diesel one, the conventional submarines we have, the Scorpion class, Calvary class, uh, Akula class, etc. Uh, all this diesel uh, have it is smaller in size because it will be having a diesel engine uh, that will be powering this smaller in size it makes less noise uh, but it has less power less range means it cannot launch ballistic missile so less range of missile launching less speed and capability means uh, more numbers of missiles cannot be incorporated in a diesel engine why because uh, it is smaller in size basically that whole submarine submarine is small in size good for shallow waters means it will it can remain always it can remain in the shallow waters the continental margins you know not not deep water it is not meant for deep water uh, you know uh, uh, activities so it is good for shallow waters may, means mostly it will be remaining in the uh, what the the continental shelf it can go in, it can it can't stay under water for longer periods now this is the advantage that a uh, disadvantage that nuclear power submarines will uh, you know fulfill so it is larger in size and it makes more noise. All these two are the disadvantages. It is larger in size, so easily detectable, and it makes more noise because uh, nuclear power reactor will be there, and uh, there will be a steam circulator to power that. So do you use, using the temperature produced by this nuclear reactor, the steam will be used to you know turn the turbine and produce the electricity or whatever power it is. So uh, it makes more noise and it is larger in size, but it has more power. It has more range, more speed and capability. And it is good for deep water. So, this submarine can remain underwater, like very much underwater, not in the continental shelf. It cannot be used in continental shelves or marginal water. Why? Because it is very large in size. So, it is easily detectable. detectable. So, we use, uh, we will be using diesel 
submarines in all those areas. But in deep water, it can remain for weeks in the deep water without coming up. So that is that is a uh, you know that is a stealth capability of that. Like it can remain undetected uh, for a long period of time underwater. So you know it can be uh, away from the scanner. So that is the that is why we have we are successful nuclear triad because if there is a condition a war like situation then a submarine uh, 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 you know INS Arihan which is a nuclear powered submarine it can remain for there for weeks and whenever possible whenever required it can launch a nuclear missile without any detection without any indication to the enemy countries. So that is why uh, it is good for deep waters and it can stay underwater for longer periods. This is the advantage of diesel, uh, nuclear submarine uh, over diesel submarine. So uh, that is it INS Arihan you remember that it is India's indigenously built first nuclear powered and ballistic uh, submarine that is coming under SSDN but we have bought INS Chakra from Russia so do not confuse with that and uh, regarding the advantages and key features just keep in mind this slide that is all thank you.